Greetings, Inquisitor. I'm pleased you found this holocron. I'm Darth Lokwitter, and today we're going to talk about a 1.4 million galactic power account that went straight for Supreme Leader Kylo Ren after purchasing the Hyperdrive bundle. I think this is a good account to use as an example for other people who might want to do the same thing. You'll see what an account like this can look like, what the advantages are, and what some of the downfalls or drawbacks might be to building an account this way. And we're going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the delay of game that we're calling on the finalizer. Because in the SLKR build, you focus on the characters. It's easy to get like tunnel vision on the characters. You start relicking them, and then suddenly you realize how far away you really are from getting your finalizer unlocked and going. So that's a critical issue for this account that we'll talk a little bit about. Remember to hit your like sabers on the way through. Let's get over there, have a look, see what he's got going on. In his account, you can see that he's number 17 in arena, number 2 in fleet. That's very good placement for where he's at. Let's take a look at his ships first. Here you see Kylo Ren's silencer, the shuttle, tie advanced, first order, slave one, houndstooth, and Xanadu blood. Those are the seven ships required for the finalizer unlock. So we're finishing up the Xanadu blood and the houndstooth. A uh, little bit left to go on the Vader ship too, I think. Um, we did unlock the Chimera. We got the we got some uh, some stars on the Ghost and Phantom, so I, I guess he went ahead and unlocked that Chimera as well. I would recommend for other players doing this that you don't get that Chimera. It's galactic power you don't need. Here you see he's got six of the characters already relicked. We've got Emperor Palpatine and Darth Vader already up and coming. There's the officer, Captain Phasma's down here. So we've got the First Order all on the way. We've also got a Grand Admiral Thrawn at seven stars, so he did take the Phoenix high enough. Here's the hyperdrive bundle stuff, just a bunch of stuff in the middle. We do see a Jolie Bindo at three stars, so maybe considered going the, the Revan path, but then realized how many different characters you got to farm for the Revan path, and it's really quite a commitment. And if you're already on your way to SLKR, it's probably not a commitment that you want to make. Um, at the same time. So if we take a look at Kylo Ren unmasked, uh, he's got 13 speed there, 12 speed there, health mods, trying to get speed substats, health cross, health triangle, and speed with health. Now, if we look at his stats, you can see he's almost 100,000 health, um, got decent protection, but the armor here is a little bit low. We're just getting armor from that uh, tri uh, diamond so either that triangle or that cross could benefit from being an armor a defense main stat that'll get him more durability even though uh, Kylo Ren does have abilities that are based on his health it still works out that armor will keep him alive longer um, even though he's regenerating less health because he has a little bit less health the armor is making him take less damage so overall, once you get to that point, it's better. On the Sith Trooper, we've got a crit damage set and health. So the mods are okay. We've got crit damage on the triangle. That makes sense. But here we have tenacity on the cross, and I'm not sure that makes sense. I would probably look for an offense um, main stat on that cross. And maybe you have a health mod with a offense main stat that you could swap out a little bit and still keep your set bonuses that you want. There's also a neat trick you can do with the Sith Trooper. You got Vader and Palpatine that are going to be doing their thing, but then you can actually put the Sith Trooper with the rest of these garbage Sith on a team. Every time one of them gets killed, the Sith Trooper triggers another turn with his Zeta, and something for like Geos, for example, it has a lot of single uh, target attacks. They kill one at a time, and the Sith Trooper can take six turns in a row with his big area effect and uh, kill off the Geos. So if we just look through this account again, he, he didn't just, just go with the SLKR. He did uh, build up the bounty hunters, of course, for the ships, but he did also build you know a little bit of an Empire team to go in there as well. So it's not just strictly SLKR, but mostly, <laughs> mostly those characters. So if we 
want to go through his account for an account analysis, and in the typical style, we're going to talk about this in terms of Grand Arena more than anything. Um, obviously, he knows what he's doing in squad and fleet. I don't have to give him too much advice there. But for Grand Arena, you know, we like to think about an account in terms of uh, having one big solid defensive team, at least one big solid offensive team to break up whatever the opponent has, uh, a base of teams for placement and cleanup. If there's any six team, six character teams ideas that we have for 3v3, we'll give those. And the idea is always to work with what he's already got and not to try to invent something new that's not what he's already doing. So what's going well? Solid progress towards SLKR. He's got half the character's relic already. He uh, used the hyperdrive bundle to speed up the build. If you're going to rush uh, SLKR, it makes a lot of sense because you get some boost to the first order. You also get a boost to the bounty hunters uh, whose ships that you need for the finalizer event. So the hyperdrive bundle is really a big boost toward uh, SLKR. Um, I've talked to this player <clears throat> directly, and he, for a newer player, has a very clear understanding of team setups, character builds. He's been a gamer for a long time, so he's not confused about any of that stuff. So you see that the count is in pretty good order in that regard. Opportunities. Mods, and uh, again, we, I've talked to the player about mods. He understands, he knows. He just hasn't been able to commit as many resources to them yet as he wants. But he understands that that's uh, on the horizon. And we talked about stabilizing the account. And somebody asked in chat the other day over on Discord, what, what does it mean to stabilize an account? And what I mean by that is, is basically that you have some teams for event participation, having the Sith tag, the Jedi tag in good working order to try to get things out of events. For example, having an Empire team and a Rebel team. And... Uh, that allows you to get so much extra stuff out of the game. So, for example, if he skipped that um, Phoenix run that he did, he wouldn't have Rebels, he wouldn't have the Emperor. Um, you know, you, you got to get that stuff into your account. And, of course, he needs the Emperor. So it makes sense to do Phoenix to get that Emperor. That way you have a Rebel team with the Phoenix. You get the Emperor unlocked for the uh, SLKR stuff. Uh, it also is about fill teams for Grand Arena, so that Phoenix team then makes a team that he can use somewhere to just fill in. It's not a great team, but you got to have something. And um, the Empire team, Vader, gives him another team on offense. And then what you can see from these kinds of accounts, it really sort of falls short after that. If you're placing four defenses and you're using uh, offenses, uh, you really very quickly find yourself running out. So now we'll address the kind of issue that you can see with the Galactic Legend Rush account like this one. The account's only a few months away from finishing out all of the character requirements to Relic level for this SLKR, but could be eight months out on the finalizer. We've still got a couple months left to finish out these ships. When we do, we're going to have a four-star finalizer and then each time the event comes around, we'll be able to get 10 shards. We need 65 to get it to five stars. So the event has to show up seven more times. And that could be maybe four or five months uh, before the event shows up enough to close that out to a five-star ship. So that puts this, this person seven or eight months away from getting the finalizer when they're only two or three months away from finishing the characters. And sitting on all of the character requirements done for five months waiting for that ship is really frustrating. So the owner of the count is aware of this and understands that they may need to use crystals to stay on track with the timeline that they want to execute this SLKR. So at least they're knowledgeable enough to know that that's the case. But just understand if this is what you're planning to do with your account, this is where you could end up. You could end up with all the characters ready to go and still chasing that finalizer because you really do have to build up the bounty hunter ships and fleet and get all that stuff going if you're going to take the finalizer that way. Also understand that your guild participation is limited. You get the one good first order team with Kylo Ren unmasked and the crew. So that's what you get. You get one team to participate in raids and basically one team that's good at clearing in GOTB, for example with not a whole lot left behind it. 
So if your guild is picky about that kind of stuff for participation, um, they shouldn't mind as long as you're building that SLKR. But, uh, but just understand that is a limitation on the account if you go straight for the Galactic Legend. Uh, fleet can kind of be a mess to get sorted out. Uh, there's no clear path to either the Malevolence or the Negotiator based on what you do in this account and what this player's already done in the account. So you kind of have to sort that out and figure it out. And that begs the question, you know, what to build next. So what would I do? Right now, we've got characters and teams that we need to fill in a little more. Uh, the Geos are started, but I would finish out the Geos, get those going, get them to seven stars. It's a good enough team, and again, you get them to 16-5, you get a Watt Shard with them, guilds like that, you'll like the participation. The Geos can do good work in the, in the territory battles, and um, they unlock Padme, and that's going to get you another good team. The Jedi, uh, Bastila Shawn's already in there somewhere. We've got Anakin and Ahsoka. Ezra and Kanan are already built from the uh, Phoenix team. So with those five characters, we can unlock a Grandmaster Yoda, and it looks like he has at least some of that underway already. So we've finished those out to seven stars, established that Jedi tag for the, for the account so that we can do certain events. For the Empire team, we've got Thrawn, Vader, Emperor Palpatine, and Tarkin. I would add a fifth to that so that you could have a full Empire team for certain events, and I would do that by adding Moff Gideon as the next good character, and I understand that he's single shard drop, but he is out of the cantina. He's not hard at all to build. Uh, I've built him on my alt account in, in relatively quick time, so he would be a great fifth to add to that Empire team and get that tag up and running in the account. Then there's three possible next steps. So we know already from, from discussion with him that he's looking to balance out toward the light side after he builds the dark side SLKR. So looking on the light side, Ray could be a, a, a topic of discussion. That's something he's thought about doing. But Ray has the disadvantage of the same fleet challenge that you face with SLKR. There's a lot of ships to build in order to unlock the Radis. And once you get the Radis, you have to wait for the event. So it becomes the same thing again. And he's already blowing up his galactic power with all the fleets for the SLKR. To follow that up again with all the fleet work for the Radis is really, I think, too much for, a, for an account that's under 2 million galactic power. Uh, so I, I don't think Ray is quite the right move. The Revens aren't as desirable. If, if Revens are the first thing that you do, it's very good. But if you've already got SLKR, they're gonna, he's going to be able to do a lot of what the Revens can do for you in the game. So basically, you'd just be looking at building JKR at that point, and that might not be the, the best, most efficient path. Uh, if we look at gas as the, as the next direction, that would give us a clear direction on fleet, because with gas, you're going to build a Padme team that'll give you Anakin and Ahsoka, General Kenobi, and it'll kind of point you in the direction of the negotiator. And you do need a seven-star endurance or negotiator for the event. So that's where you say, okay, I will someday go for gas, and then you start building that negotiator and working that towards seven stars. That's a, a very key part of it. You don't want to have to build the endurance to seven stars and get it good enough to do that event. That's really a waste of a lot of resources. So basically, you take a, a long arc into gas. You don't try to rush it. You don't try to hurry because you can end up in the same spot over on gas where you've got all of the character requirements done and you're just waiting on that ship to get your uh, guild event tokens to finish out your negotiator seven stars. And you don't want to end up there twice in the same account. So that's what I would do. I would build the Padme team with Ahsoka, General Kenobi, Anakin, and I would take Anakin to Relic. You can put Grandmaster Yoda in there as your fifth, since you're going to build him. It makes sense to do that. Shakti and the clones uh, can be built after that. And again, this is you know, if you have to, an interlude between finishing out your first order characters and uh, getting the finalizer finished, these are things that you can work on. Shakti and the clones are a good team. I would relic the fives, and you can kind of park them wherever they are. Uh, they'll be able to get you some good 
raid participation and, and guild participation in certain events. So it's not bad, and it gives you a clone tag for, for other stuff. At some point, you want to do the Ewoks to get C-3PO and replace that Grandmaster Yoda in the Padme account, in the Padme team. And then you have to get General Grievous and the Separatist droids. And, you know, Newt is an easy sixth character to build, again, with the idea of the 3v3. And build him as your sixth character for that team. And then you can flex those droids, one with Grievous and one set with Newt. And then Asajj, you can build her pretty much whenever you're ready to close out the deal and get that, uh, get that gas going. And then uh, just a note down here at the bottom, so while you're working on that seven-star negotiator, you can work on the, on the Padme team to the extent that you relic, uh, relic them, relic the clones, relic the GG team. So a lot, of, a lot of time can be spent on those teams. No worries. Plenty of time to get that uh, uh, negotiator finished out. You're looking at um, an eight to nine month arc to build all these characters and teams and get the ship to where it needs to be if you're in a decent guild. So you're already working on Hound's Tooth and ships. I would stick with that. I would start working on Anakin's ship right away. You're going to need that to go along with the negotiator. You can also start buying the Clone Sergeant's ship from the Fleet Arena store. That's another good ship that you can use as a reinforcement with the negotiator. But uh, yeah, start picking that up out of the Fleet Arena store. And then if you have the resources, you can also start farm farming the Umbra and Starfighter 5's ship out of uh, Fleet 3B hard. For mods, um, you know what to do. I, I give the same lecture every time, you know, it's uh, more, more good mods, more speed mods with speed substats. So now we'll get into Grand Arena and discuss a little bit of the dilemma with a focused account like this that went straight for Kylo Ren. We're at 1.4 million galactic power, and in the new scheme of things, that puts us in Division 10, but already placing four teams on defense and using four teams on offense. And then very quickly, we're going to get through that 1.6 million galactic power while we're building our galactic legend. And that'll put us in Division 9, where we have to place five teams on 3v3 and seven teams, uh, I'm sorry, seven on 3v3 and five on 5v5. So it's going to stretch this account real thin in a hurry if you don't have some tricks to help you. So you can use your advantage in fleet strength you do have a bunch of ships that you've built for the finalizer event. So you could put a bounty hunter fleet on defense, something like Hound's Tooth with the TIE Silencer and the TIE Shuttle. And that can be a tough defense for people to get through. Even if they beat it, they're not going to beat it with high banners uh, because of the quality of all your ships. And that allows you to save some of the other ships for offense, Vader's ship, and some things like that where you can still have a good offensive fleet and, uh, and probably win on both ends by beating their fleet and also holding or taking a lot of banners with yours. So I would put a mediocre team like Phoenix in front of fleet. They'll beat that. They'll get to your fleet. They'll have a hard time with your fleet. On the bottom, you can put your Kylo Ren unmasked team, and especially if you look across and your opponent just isn't going to have enough to beat a full relic team of first order, you can put three or four relics in that team in the bottom front, and just hold them up. Hopefully they won't get to your back wall defense. You do want to save the Sith Trooper and the old school Kylo. I call him Kylo Ren Masked. Um, save them for offense. You've got your Empire team with Vader and Palpatine that you'll have for offense. And that leaves you with just two generic hyperdrive bundle defenses, whatever you can throw together for the back wall. And that's at four teams. If you had to place five teams, you can see this would be stretched real thin in a hurry. On the other hand, if you look across at your opponent and they have built Revens, uh, some accounts that build Revens are going to look like this. They're going to be similar in galactic power. They're going to be similar with three or four uh, relics on the Jedi Knight Revan side and, and maybe two or three relics on the Darth Revan side. And that's going to be a tough team for you to face, especially if they've got a good Malak. If they have a good Malak, there's probably not a lot that you can do. You're not probably not going to beat a good Darth Revan team with your First Order stuff until you get SLKR. So if you see a Darth Revan team that you can't beat, for example, 
then really put that Kylo Ren on mass with, with all of his buddies on the bottom front. Put other, you have to also put other decent teams on the back wall in case they do get through. Maybe they keep that Darth Revan on offense and surprise you. Uh, but then you want to force them to have to use that against your first order team. And then you don't want your back wall to be easy. And you can again do the Phoenix in front of ships and place your best, your arena fleet, your best fleet on defense and really hope to hold them up on that um, fleet node. You really only need one really good team and one mediocre team for offense. If they put their best team in front of ships and block you out there, then you want to be able to clear a good team in the front on the bottom zone and uh, you know still have something back for whatever they leave on the back zone. So you'll need a few teams, but just remember, once they've put up a team like Darth Revan that can stop your best team, it will stop all of your teams. It doesn't matter how much stuff you take on offense. And if they save everything on offense and, and put up a, a very weak defense, then you'll still have enough stuff back to, to clear. Just make sure you have a couple good teams, and then if they just put a garbage defense down, it'll be you know potentially full clear versus full clear. All right, so by the time you're close to SLKR, you'll definitely be over 1.6 and you'll need 5. And in that case, you, you could you know, see that as being stretched even thinner, or you can see that as being solved by SLKR whenever you get him. So if you really want to be, um, uh, <laughs> if you want to win, you can win by just putting an SLKR with the, you know, the off-brand uh, first order on a, on a defense in the bottom zone and put a good first order team, put Kylo Ren unmasked in charge of the best of your first order in the top zone. And you can potentially set up a situation where the enemy's not going to get through anything. They won't be able to beat your top zone. They won't be able to beat your bottom zone. It'll be a zero zone clear, and as long as you can kill one team and clear one zone, um, you win the, the GAC. So that's a pretty tough spot for your opponents to be in. And maybe you don't want to do that. You can do a similar thing. Just save your SLKR. Uh, put a good first order defense down. And then Supreme Leader Kylo Ren can solo uh, a great deal of early game teams uh, until, until you get to a full Relic uh, Revan team with Darth Malak at Relic Tears. Um, you really don't have to worry about anything in the game. SLKR can pretty much solo it. So you can also take him on offense and just use him against their best team uh, to kill it. But that uh, it does give them more opportunity to clear your side of the board. So either way, if you want more banners, take SLKR on offense. Save another team behind him, you know, so that if you do need some of his characters maybe you need to take a tank in with him or something like that just to make sure but uh, but you can definitely flex him either way but the defensive side of it makes all of your teams not a problem you just put two teams on defense everything else can be garbage uh, they're not going to get through an SLKR unless they have one of their own so it's a um, an unpleasant move for your opponent but it's a way to get a victory in the bank Going forward, as we're building this account, the Padme team is going to give you good flex team for either offense or defense. The Bounty Hunter team is good for offense. Clones are good for offense. The Ewoks can be a, a back wall defense, or they can replace your Phoenix just in front of your ships as a, as a token defense. Uh, and the Grievous and Droids can be a great team for the front wall to steal banners. Now, Padme, the Bounty Hunters, Clones, and Grievous are all good with one, one Relic character. So this is a way to control your galactic power, to not blow your account up too much, but getting good functional 5v5 and 3v3 teams. Padme, you do Anakin. Bounty Hunters, you do Bosk. Clones, you do Fives. And Grievous team, you do General Grievous himself. And all of those teams will run with just one relic character. And eventually you'll have to build them up if you go the gas path, but, uh, but that does give you the options while you're in that um, range of the 1.6 to, to 2.3 million or whatever it is till your next uh, tier in the Grand Arena. 
So that gives you some thoughts on how to play your Grand Arena setup with the account that you've got. It's not easy to do with these uh, SLKR Rush accounts. They they really run out of teams in a hurry because you've got all of your resources tied up in just a few characters. But you can work around it a bit and uh, stymie your opponents if you uh, if you put some strategy behind it. Thank you all for watching. If this is the kind of account that you're planning to build, now you can see how it's going to look and pay attention to that finalizer so that you don't end up in that trap. I hope this video might help somebody who's either in that situation already or could potentially be. Remember to use your like saber, crush that like button, cut it in half if you haven't already. It helps me, helps the channel, and I appreciate it very much. Uh, join us over on the Discord. we got a great community over there. Thank you all for your time. And I will see you in the next Holocron.